how do I know what people need? It makes my heart happy that I have something to give this somebody every day. To what degree has that like come back and helped Georgia stay here and stay with us and not just end up in that terrible yo-yo cycle? Yeah, be ready for Georgia Baker to take your name. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Eat Like a Bear Taking Names podcast. This is a community that is kicking butt and taking names. And here on the podcast, you are going to meet some of our biggest butt kickers. And I do have a little warning for all of you who are finding us today. And that is that we may very well take your name. And you could end up on this very podcast, maybe out and on an adventure in Glacier National Park, losing your cane, losing those little ex few extra pounds that are slowing you down and getting you out on your new life. And we're going to need to hear your story too. But today, I am excited to bring you Miss Georgia Baker. Georgia Baker is 68 years old. She's been with Eat Like a Bear since around Thanksgiving of 2019. So she's going to tell us about her weight loss journey. She is a Texas mom and grandma. And more than that, many people in the bear community know her for her inspirational posts and for a video she made when she was down 70 pounds that has just completely captured the, the community here. And so I am excited to bring you more of her story here. We're going to hear some details of her story, and then we are going to have a chance to just engage with her a little bit as a community. I welcome all of you who are viewing and I welcome Miss Georgia Baker. Hey everybody. I'm very, very excited to do this. It's, I know when that video, when I did that video so long ago, it seems like forever. I was so fired up and so excited about what I was doing and what I was accomplishing. And I still watch it today and just ball. Wow. So, so Georgia, you know what? Let's just play that video right now. I was going to save this for later, but let's just lead with the Georgia Baker video from the spring of 2020. <laughs> here we go. Hey, everybody. Georgia here. I just want to tell all of those um, who are standing in the background contemplating on whether they can do this or not. Um, you can. You can. It's as plain and simple as that. Since my highest weight in July, I am down 70 pounds and I feel better than I ever dreamed possible. But it's a process. So don't expect it to be overnight. Trust in yourself. You, you can do this. Look at the support group that you have. Look at all the mentors that we have. Your main thing is, is you've got to dig in. And like I told Amanda, I said like, I am gonna grind, grind this into the ground because this is going to be my success story. This is changing my life. And make sure you realize that you're worth this. Every single day, you're worth it. It still makes me cry. I had such passion when I first started. There was nothing standing in my way. And I've, over the years, I've had some things happen and I've faltered a little bit, but I have never stopped. I have never given up and I will never give up until I get where I'm going to go. And that's the first time I've ever, I've, I've never felt this way before. I've never felt that I have hope no matter what, no matter what obstacle. I have hope that I can take it all the way to the finish line. Well, and, and Georgia, so we're going to go through some of, you know, some of the things that you did, but maybe, maybe stay a little bit because clearly, I mean, you're, so you're not at the finish line, as you would say, but your life has completely changed from your starting oh, yeah. point. Can you tell us a little bit about that? What kind of changes are in your pocket? Well, I know when I started, I was disabled. I couldn't work. I was walking with a cane. I could barely get up to my mailbox, which was maybe about 50 feet without pain. And I mean, I was headed for a wheelchair. My doctor told me that I was going to be in a wheelchair. Since then, I, the non-scale victories are just off the charts. I can walk. I can I, I don't have to use a mark cart when I'm shopping. I can walk all the way through the grocery store and spend two hours in the grocery store and never get tired. Um, I don't have a cane. I don't walk with pain. Of course, right now I have a hip injury, so I'm kind of fighting that. But my life just 
what I can do now compared to what I could do when I first started is, is, is 180 degree turnaround. Wow. Congratulations, Georgia. Congratulations for like getting a hold and, you know, and going and kicking some butt. <laughs> so, yes, right. so when you, you, and you set one of the records in the community for getting down a hundred pounds. Let's hear a little bit about that. So the hundred pounds, what you did, and then what ended up as a stumbling block? I, when I started, I, I guess about a month in, one of my, I have lots of mentors, but one, a couple of my mentors was Patty Costa and she was absolutely the fasting queen. She, uh, got me interested in fasting because I was seeing her pictures of just the skin healing was just off the charts. And the same with Sarah Myers. Now, Sarah wasn't doing a lot of extended fasting. She was very routine with 23-1, 23-1, and then every now and then she'd do a 48. But I was just like, oh my gosh, if I can heal skin like that. And so I started really getting into extended fasting, following the framework whenever I ate and following, following them and doing those extended fasts, I dropped a hundred pounds in, I think it was three or four days shy of six months that I lost a hundred pounds. And I think I beat Sarah's record. I think Sarah, and here she was one of my mentors and, and I beat her. I think she was like six months and eight days or a week or something like that. But it's just, but after that, after I lost that hundred pounds, I went on to lose another 25, but then life got in the way. I, it didn't get in the way. I, I had some very tragic events where in one year, one year's time, I lost 29 people as far as friends and family that passed away. Only, I think, I think it was four due to COVID. Others were suicides and just old age and health, other health related issues. And that threw me in a depression. I didn't think that I could get out of. I'm sorry, I've got a, a bee in here fighting me. Um, but it, it's just like, I, I, no matter what I did, I couldn't climb out. All the, all the support from everybody else, it just wasn't enough. And I just, I fell off badly, badly. And I gained close to 70 pounds back, but I, I dug back in. Finally, something's flipped that switch. Don't remember where, or when, and I know a lot of it had to do with you, Amanda, and just being there and always pushing, always, you know, encouraging us and everything else that I, that flipped and I got right back in it. And then I've got about 20 more to go. So I'm, I'm at my hundred pounds that I've still have my hundred pounds that I've lost, but I want to get back to where my lowest and get past that 200 mark. That's awesome, Georgia. And, you know, in June, so in the deep den, a big thing we're doing is like really getting strict, buckling down. So this is exactly the right time to go, mm -hmm. to go crush it. And just a little shout out on this, like all of, we've all been there in terms of, you know, losing and gaining and like the whole, whole yo-yo thing. And the fact is that Georgia, so has, who has been apologetic, like all over this platform about having gained. The fact is Georgia first didn't gain it all back or gain it back plus more. And so before right. it got to that point that she got in and she's been working on it, I think that's flipping fantastic, fantastic. And I think what we all need to do is just have this goal of like catching it before, like, so Georgia in the future, you're going to catch it before it's 75 pounds. You know, you want to mm -hmm. catch it like what if I catch it at 10, you know? So exactly. I, this is, yeah. Yeah. Georgia. And th this is great, but let's say a little bit. So because people coming new here don't even know what in the heck we eat or anything else. And Georgia has talked about extended fasting and intermittent fasting. So just briefly, um, intermittent fasting is just time restricted eating. So I tend to eat one to two meals in a day in a very narrow window. And so maybe mid morning until early afternoon is when I'm eating and the rest of the time I'm not eating. And Georgia's reference to extended fasting is times well, where you skip eating all day, you know, so you might, a 48 hour fast is where you skip an entire day of eating. You might eat Monday and then you skip Tuesday in eating 
and then you eat again on Wednesday. And we do have community members who are doing extended fasting, but the main approach we take is doing like a one meal model or maybe a two day model. So we have daily eating that looks a certain way. And so we have what we call the ridiculously big salad, the ridiculously big skillet. A lot of people lean into this framework, but then some people will take it and adapt it and do whatever it is they're gonna do. So I'm curious to ask Georgia, when you do eat, so when you're not doing an extended fast, because that's when you're just not eating, what is it that you tend to eat in a day? Um, probably my favorite go-to is going to be the cheeseburger salad. And I just, it literally will be close to about a half a, letta, a head of lettuce. And then I add my other greens to it. Uh, sometimes it'll be spinach, sometimes broccoli, sometimes cauliflower. And then I always like to try to make it as pretty as I can. I put a little bell pepper, but it always tries, I need it to be big enough that it will last me until the next time I eat. And that's the whole goal and what makes this so successful. If you can eat and you, you, you eat and walk away, you know that I am done until tomorrow at this time and I can do it all over again. And I'm finding this time around, I'm more successful with that than I was the extended fasting. So it's uh, just that one big salad. And, and if it's a skillet, even if I make something hot, I still want that salad. So I'll have a side salad just to finish it off. I, I've definitely found in maintenance this, this issue of eat and walk away. That's the top skill. That is the A number one skill. And it's a skill that I feel like I'm even still leveling up for myself. And as we focus together on this upcoming June push in the deep den, it's, it's something I, 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 I'm feeling the results already and I'm excited about it. And I'm excited that it's, it's over these years of, um, you know, Georgia came in in 2019. We've learned a lot from Georgia. We've learned a lot from the people who started when Georgia started. And so all these things we, we want to take as a community and put in our pocket, but individually, ind individually as well. And so Georgia, what aspects of this daily eating and the, the, the meal framework that you are adapting for yourself, what is it that makes it distinct from sort of other things that you've tried in the past? Well, I think so, so many of them uh, that I've tried before I mean, quite a few of them were literally deprivation. And uh, when they tell you, well, the only way you're going to lose weight is to eat 800 calories a day. And then the things that they wanted you to eat, it was just like a pittance compared to what RBS is. And there's a, a lot of them, they tell you, well, you need to eat six or eight tiny meals a day. Well, that's just not even feasible. And when my husband and I were doing, before we started this, when you're eating breakfast and then you talk about a snack and then you're talking about what you're going to have for lunch and then, well, you need a snack and then you're going to talk about what you're going to have for dinner. Then after that, you're already talking about what you're going to have for breakfast. And with one meal a day, you know what you're going to have. I have my, my, all my protein is cooked up. It's in the freezer ready to go. On my lettuce, I always make sure that I have plenty. And now my garden is starting to produce. So I'm excited about that. But it's like, you know, you're going to have that one humongous meal that is just going to satisfy you and give you every one instead of all these other little things. No pills, no eating six meals a day plus snacks and all of that. I think that that's the big difference. 100% for me too. The, the, the thing is that in maintenance as I've tried two meals, it really has highlighted this point for me, the comparison to like the six little meals, because even with two meals, mm -hmm. um, my challenge is I eat meal number one at say 10 a.m. And if you're eating two, they need to be smaller than the one. Like if you're eating one, you can eat a big old giant meal, but the two, you're maybe eating half of that giant meal. And so you have meal number one, and then maybe four hours later, you're having meal number two. And what I find is in those Inner, inner hours, like those four hours, I'm thinking about food the whole time because I wasn't satisfied with meal number one. I wasn't really done. And so now I'm still thinking about food. And you know what's really terrible is then four hours later, my other small meal, I'm still not satisfied. And so I end up not satisfied that day. And so I'm like, okay, if I'm going to have two meals, I'm going to make it even maybe a smaller window, like two and a half hours or something like that, so that I can get satisfied. And so then thinking six meals 
I mean, there's no flipping way like the handful of nuts <laughs> is doing anything except making me think about food. And I'm tired, tired, tired of thinking about food all flipping day long. So yeah, absolutely, Georgia. I, I feel like for me too, that is the like the game changing difference. But anyway, we should come on and we should say like the craziest diet we've ever went on. Cause I love Georgia's comment about like all of them were deprivation and boring and whatever else. The most disgusting weight loss diet I have ever been on is probably a non-fat diet. I remember eating non-fat bagels. They're not that terrible, but I was putting non-fat cream cheese on those bagels. Oh my gosh. Stay away from the non-fat cream cheese. I was on a diet. These, you know, the kind of packets that instant oatmeal comes in. Everything came in a little packet like that. And each one of those packets was 100 calories. And so it could have been um, like macaroni and cheese, or it could have been oatmeal or whatever. The I mean, it, it was this whole range of foods, but they all came in these little packets. And so it, whatever it was, you were allowed to have six of those packets a day. So eating six times a day, these little dried packets of quote food. Um, and then you could also have a small green salad um, with your dinner or whatever. Pureed soup. That's all we could eat was pureed soup. And the other one was the liquid protein diet, goopy, nasty stuff like motor oil. And you had to drink that, and that's all you got was the liquid protein. The worst diet that I was ever on was while I was pregnant the first time, and the doctor put me on diet pills, and they were the pills that truckers used so that they could drive 24 hours a day. My worst diet ever, I was put on by the nutritionist. She wanted me to eat every two hours and only a thousand calories a day. If you take a thousand calories, divide it up and into eating every two hours, you're basically snacking all day long. Georgia, as we look to 2024 in particular, we have a community wide big goal of like, well, a, a date for a big goal but all of us have our own individual big goals. And so a big goal is not what you're going to look like in this case, April of 2024, but what you were going to be doing out living your most awesome and vibrant life. And Georgia, can you tell us a little bit about your own big goal and maybe some of the non-scale victories that you've had over these years? Well, my big goal has changed from when I started uh, from when I started, that's all I thought about was just, I want to be this particular weight. Um, when, when I hear you, what your goal was, was to be able to hike with your children, to have, have that connection with them, to be a part of it. Um, I think right now, since we're living out in the country, I know one of my lady friends that lives down the street, she walks with her dogs, usually about three miles all in through the woods, down through the creek and everything else. And I kept telling her, I said, like, I would love to be able to do that with you. And uh, so I'm, I'm, I think that that is going to be my big goal is I want to be able to get out and walk with her all these hills and valleys down in the creek and the woods and just listen to the sights and sounds of what I have out here. And so right now today at your current weight, can you get out, like park there and just get out and sit at a bench? What can you do? Well, there's no benches. So it's if I can find a fell tree to sit on and hopefully there's no ants on it, then I'd be good. Um, the only I've tried to get out and like walk the length of our property. And so when I do that and everything, I've got the fence I can hang on to as long as I just don't grab the barbed wire. But I can get all the way down the fence and all the way back and literally walk the fence line of our property. But I've got on the outside and there's a little decline and then an incline. And that's where I have a problem. That's where I struggle with. And that's what I, I want to get to where I, I, there's no struggles. When we go, like when we do the eclipse, I want to be able to, uh, to get out and do the hiking and see the, all the waterfalls and all of that. That's what I want. 
that is wonderful. And th this place that, you know, so sitting on the logs and hoping it doesn't have ants on it, is it a nice peaceful place for you? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. That's what, that's what I think I like about out here is even when we lived in our little rural town, it was small, but it was still bustly. This is just peace and beauty and nature and quiet. And you can just really center yourself and, and find yourself. And I've needed that for a long time. Well, so your assignment, at least to the degree that it's possible, is especially on the bad days when you wake up and it's a hard day due to these life circumstances. And you're going to eat the, the type of meal that you've kind of identified as a meal that works for you. And then you're going to walk away from that. And you can mm -hmm. go out to, to that spot. And maybe even have like a little chair or something in your car if you're like not finding the place without the ants or whatever, mm -hmm. to have something that's comfortable for you that's easy to take out of the car so that you can sit and just be at peace and just take in like the sights and like aromas of all that out there. And I feel like I do this myself on the bad days and having that physical distance from the kitchen and the pantry and all of those food messages and having that positive message out there is, is for me, I mean, that's how I've gotten through some, some bad times in my life. So I'd, I'd love to see your reports from your spot, Georgia, and some photos oh, and definitely. stuff for us. Definitely. Georgia, um, what top tips do you have just as, as people are getting started and finding us here at Eat Like a Bear? Number one, I would tell them and said, you've got to have patience. You have to understand you didn't gain this overnight. You're not going to lose it overnight. So when you start having fluctuations up and down, it's part of the process. Don't panic. Don't get frustrated. Sit back. Keep telling yourself it's part of the process and keep going. No matter what, you keep moving forward. Um, and also, I... At, on the new post, a lot of times I will tell people, make sure that you take pictures, make sure that you take measurements. It's not about the scale. The scale can derail you and throw you in a tailspin that you will not pull yourself out of. Look at those pictures, even if you don't share them, even if you don't share all those particulars on the open forum, that's fine. Because the next time you take a picture, you're going to see that difference and it is going to blow you away. And those right there are going to be two of the tools that are going to help you when that lion box of numbers doesn't want to play nice. Okay, very good. Georgia, thank you so much for your tips and your tricks and your story. And we have community members with some questions for you. And so I am going to bring on Miss Virginia Jennings. Hi, Georgia. Hi, Virginia. <laughs> so I want to say how much I appreciate your positivity and your just daily positivity, even in the face of challenges or tough times. And I have a question for you about that. So okay. how do you think that your daily engagement and your daily posting and the role that you've taken in, in this group has impacted your journey? I, I think it's made a world of a difference when, when, I, when I try to put myself out there trying to be positive, even on the days that I, I don't have much positivity to give. What I get back from everybody is just over the moon wonderful. And that can just that engagement with people in the main groups and the subgroups, and especially in the den just that interaction and the feedback I get can really lift me up. And I appreciate it so very much because some days I really, really need it. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, you know, when you said earlier that I kind of disappeared for a while, I still read every post and it still helped. So I thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> okay, you guys. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Virginia. Um, next up, we have we have Brenda. Hi, Georgia. Hi, Brenda Bear. First, I want to say 
that your consistency was my lifeline. Every day your posts, and it was like, I wrote some things down. I wrote this in my diary. Georgia Baker, <clears throat> oh, now I'm going to start, is the rock of my stability. Every day I find her, and every day she grants me strength. That's, that's actually in my diary in January of 2021. <clears throat> my question for you is, did you ever realize how much your posts were encouraging and moving us newbies forward? I thank you first. That means a lot. Um, I don't think that there was ever a specific time, but when... Every now and then I'll have somebody make a comment or they'll message me and say, I just want you to know how much I appreciate you. And I just, it helps me to make those posts every day. And I just, I don't, sometimes I don't see that how, how, by what I say can make a difference. But y'all have always let me know how much it does matter. And that just makes my heart just, burst. Well, as I was saying, uh, in my journal, I have mentions of you. I don't, I'm so many times. It's like Georgia said this, Georgia posted this. So it's like, you're, you're probably more in my journal than I am sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> well, that makes but me very happy. <laughs> that it was like your consistency was dependable. And so if I had a bad day, I knew Georgia would be there to give me some wisdom or some encouragement. I loved all the things you posted, honestly. And I found your video, not when you posted, I found your video later. Um, the one that uh, is going to be played here. And that was one of the ones that really captivated me because you were like so real, like you were just raw and real and you don't find that very often. And it really, really touched my heart and made me a fan for life. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think that you are instrumental in the fact that I went from barely living to living my best life and I got to my hundred pounds and you encouraged me even through the fasting to do it properly and not to over fast, but to use common sense and wisdom. And so even then it's like, you know, you're in so many of the different subgroups that I follow you in almost every single subgroup. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of them. <laughs> there is a lot of them, but it's just, it's, it's wisdom that keeps me going and keeps me from going over the top. Cause I, I'm an over the top kind of person. I can, you know, cut off my nose to spite my face at times. And so you kept me real and kept me straight and kept me from going off the deep end more times than you will ever know <laughs> that I will ever admit to. <laughs> and I love you. I do. Well, oh, thank you. I love you too. I'm having to find me another tissue. I would like to introduce Ellen now with some, some words. Hi, Georgia. Hi, Ellen. You are awesome. You. And you have been a huge inspiration to me. I, when I first found Eat Like a Bear, it was in Women's Day. And then I went to the Facebook page and, and you posted every day and I loved reading what you had to say, and you were always very, very positive and upbeat, even with adversity going on. Uh, you still managed to drag it up, and so it was uplifting to me. And then when we switched to the den and the the private thing, it was hard for me to navigate at first, but I always knew where to look for your post, so I could see, you know, exactly what it was um, that you had to savor the day. If you were, if you were, it seemed like you were just working constantly, and then retired then not retired then retired not retired and i know you were really looking forward to that and certainly deserve that time um but i have a question yes my question for you awesome georgia is what is your very 
favorite thing to do while you're being awesome? In other words, what brings you joy when you leave the kitchen and you go out and live? Uh, I would have to say my sewing room. I, I'm a quilter and I sew and I, I enjoy making things for people. Being able to put my creativity into something that I'm making something special for somebody. Um, so my, my happy place is my sewing room, my quilting and my sewing. And do you find that that really helps you not think about the food, not think about what's next to eat? And, and definitely. Uh... definitely. I, and especially now before we moved out, we're, we're living in our RV. So before I had my sewing room was just right in the other room. And now I have to physically walk out of the house and go into the little room. And there's there's a fridge out there, but it only has drinks in it. So I don't have access. If I want something to eat, I've got to physically come in. And sometimes that's not always convenient. Mm -hmm. So well, it's it, been a pleasure to meet you and to know you and to be a bear with you. Oh, thank you. I love y'all so much. Love you too. Love you too. Well, well, thank you. And next up, we have Judy with some comments and questions for our Georgia Bear. Good morning. You've made it. We knew you could do it. <laughs> I came back. I came back. You did. You did. And if you've ever doubted how sweet Georgia is, notice the buzzing bee that's been giving her fits. I, on the other hand, have a fly that keeps coming by. <laughs> <laughs> you are such an inspiration and I'm amazed at how many wonderful quotes you have collected and I've wondered where you have found them all and the interesting thing another interesting thing is how you quilt them together to post them you have they, they're different and those different fabrics that you use in a quilt these different quotes that you put together work so well. Are you even aware of what you're doing with that? No, <laughs> I just, I, I, I see so many quotes. I, I belong to probably three or four groups that are like positive memes and, you know, positive attitudes and things like that. Cause I try, I've always tried, I, I'm a firm believer in the secret, you know, positivity brings positivity and that's why I try to wake up every day with something finding something positive about myself before I ever hit the floor and anytime that I don't do that I'll have a bad day I really will have a bad day and but I find these quotes all over Facebook uh, in emails and in my other groups and everything else and they just every one of them touch me somehow or another that quote touches me so you're constantly adding to your collection. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing them with us. They mean a lot to each one of us in different ways on different days. And you are a sweetie. Thank you. I'm, I'm close enough that I could threaten you with a drop-in visit. That wouldn't be a threat. That would be a, a welcome <laughs> visit. <laughs> okay. We'll plan it. We'll plan it. Sounds okay. Good. Sounds good. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. My goodness. And then who's going to kick whose butt in that like drop in visit? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Judy. And now I would like to introduce Anna Sewell, bear number two, with some questions and comments for Georgia Baker. Hi, Georgia Bear. Hi, Anna Bear. <laughs> it, it, uh, I remember when we got to hug in Florida, and I just wish I could give you another hug right now. <laughs> Me too. I just have two questions for you. The first one is, do you find that you think about yourself differently now than you did a couple years ago? Absolutely. Absolutely. I, that whole shame thing, it was like, uh, I know that comes into our conversation quite frequently in the den. It was just like I was embarrassed of myself when whenever I'd go to the stores and I always felt like people were looking at me and watching me and oh my gosh, look how fat she is. You know, you always have that mentality that that's what people are perceiving. And um, I don't feel that way anymore. 
I'm every now and then I might be a little self-conscious, but I don't have near what I did before. Just the strength of knowing like what you can do. And I think also just knowing all the people that we've come in contact with. I mean, you've lifted up so many people. And when you say that in the, in the little clip where you're saying that you're worth it, I think you know that you're worth it now. <laughs> you really are. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the other thing I wanted to ask was, what are some of the things you, I know you journal when you're working through things. What, what are some of the ways you journal? Because it might help some other people journal and get some of those things out too. Well, the, one of the things I've, I've got my, my daily journal on what I want to do today. What, what are, what are my goals for the day? Um, and then I have my journal that anything that's going on, what I'm feeling, if somebody's upset me, why it upset me, how am I handling that upset? Uh, what did I do? Did, how, how did I react? Um, those are, that's kind of my tool journal. I can go back and I can look through that and go like, wow, maybe I should have did that different. Or why did I feel that way? And I can go back and I can tell by my writing on what kind of a day I was having. <laughs> I've always been told that I have beautiful handwriting and I can write cursive, which some people can't even write cursive anymore, but I can write cursive and you can read every single word. And, but then on bad days, it's just like chicken scratch. And it was like, I must have really been having a bad day. So that journal helps a lot on letting me know what's going on how, and how I'm handling it. So it's, it's a good tool. And I try to encourage people to journal. I, I'm going to do more of it. Um, I, what you said about the handwriting is amazing because it, it yeah, I, I almost couldn't read some of the stuff that I wrote before because I was just so upset. And, um, and, but it, once I got that out, it it's like it wasn't in me anymore. <laughs> yeah, but exactly. Uh, yeah, and but what you're saying about it gives you a chance to pause to to see what's going on because um, that's really important. So, yeah, it gets it gets it out of here and it gets it yeah. on paper to where you can let it go, yeah. and that I think is what it it's, makes it such a good tool. It's a release it can release what's bugging you go like, well, that wasn't quite as bad as I thought it was, you know? So it, it really is a good tool. I also had another question uh, about diabetes. You started off with diabetes. I started off pre-diabetic. Would you say that that started to get better right away? It, it definitely was. The doctor told me the very next blood work. Cause when I had gone in like three months later, I had already lost like 40, 50 pounds. And she was just going like, Oh my gosh, what are you doing? Cause she was <laughs> a very, a, a quite heavy set lady. And uh, she said, let's go ahead and do your blood work. And there was nothing, nothing. You said, you're not even on the, on the line anymore. You're way under and said, and so I told her what I was doing and she actually started kind of doing the one meal a day, but wouldn't commit all the way. That's, that's, awesome because there's so many things that people who have diabetes, especially women, have so many more um, problems once we have that. And so you kind of nipped it in the bud. Yep. So that's awesome. I'm sure you <laughs> and, and also just to be an encouragement to other people, because a lot of times um, somebody like doctors will tell you, you have to lose weight and then it'll improve your blood sugar. But what I've seen a lot is that some of that gets better and then you, you lose more weight after you get into that groove. So um, that's, that's awesome. I was curious about that. Love you, Georgia Bear. I love you too <laughs> so very much. You just, you don't know what you mean to me oh. because you are, you are one of my mentors ever since the beginning and I just love you to pieces. Oh, I love you too. <laughs> Thank you, Anna. And now um, we're going to hear a few words from Lana. Hey, Georgia Bear. How are you? I am fantastic. I just want to let you know that you have been such an inspiration to me. 
I'm gonna get through this without crying too. <laughs> That's in our waterworks. Um, yeah, the, I'm what Amanda refers to as the prodigal bear where I was in and I was so in and I was gonna be one of the first 100 bears to reach the, reach the 100 pound loss century bear, but I dwindled off and got my head in the wrong space and I'm back. And one of the first things I did when I came back was I just searched you out and I just needed your wonderful sunshine personality because you are an inspiration. I remembered you from the last time when you had a little video clip and you're like, me and Kelvin are out on our walk. And it was just, it was just so cute. And you in your sewing room and showing us your beautiful items that you can create. And, um, has your goals changed at all? Like your major, yes. you want to do? Yes. The, when I first started, it was all about the weight. It was all about the weight and getting out of wearing a 34 W in a pants. You know, it was like I wanted to be able to go and buy clothes in a regular store. And it was weight, 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 size, size, size. And now it's just like I want I'm 68 years old. You know, I want to I we're living out here in the country and I want to be able to go out and walk out in the woods and enjoy all the beauty that's around me. And, and that's my goal now, you know, that that's my goal is I want to be able to do it without pain and all of that. So I hear you. That's great. Now walking is a good thing. Yeah. It'd be it nice is. to go without pain. Yeah. But I appreciate you. All, all of the bears are my inspiration every day. And sometimes when I, I struggle to get that on there every day. But then when the comments start coming back, oh, I needed this today. Oh, you did exactly what I needed. And it was like, how did I do that? You know, how, how do I know what people need? Your personality is magnetic. I appreciate that. Piggybacking on that, I just want to put up a comment from Jackie Pick, who's in our live studio audience, who says, Georgia, you have a knack for getting on the same wavelength of the person you were talking to or exchanging posts with. You know how to meet people on their own terms. So. That's just, I mean, it, it makes my heart happy that I have something to give to somebody every day. And it really makes, it makes my life better. Wow. Yeah. Well, and this is it. When I first, like, you know, five years ago, when I started sharing my photo, I really thought that it was all about the food. And at this point, I'm going to say it's like 1% about the food. And it's about having the supportive community and, and because that's going to let us each stay engaged, you know, and, 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 and to know that it's, it's okay, you know, that we all, we judge ourselves so harshly, each of us, we, we all do, that's universal. And then to have the positive support that, that Georgia, you know, just spreads across, across the community. But, you know, to what degree has that like come back and help Georgia stay here and stay with us and not just end up in that terrible yo-yo cycle? And, and for me too, I, I find this, I, I have said many times, like, would I, would I be 280 again if I had never like founded this community? And I think I would, or maybe I'd be 350 by now or 400. I don't know. All of us lean into that support that the whole community has um, on those bad days and also see that your story and your struggles, like George's imperfect st story, you know? is what is inspiring people. All of our stories are imperfect in you know, some way or another. And all of those things we can take and, and learn from them to just stay focused. And so I, I really thank you, Georgia, too, for your role in, in inspiring this, this whole community all these years, all these years, even in those days when you haven't seen it. So I'm, I'm excited that we've done this video and we can really like, like be frank about this and be frank yeah. about the role of Georgia and honestly, many, many people in this community because yes. there, while there's only one Georgia Baker, you know, <laughs> there, there are so many great inspirational stories around here and that's, 
that is what makes it exciting. Georgia, I'm going to ask, do you have any, do you have any final words for us? Just like on the video clip before, you know, just don't give up, you know, don't give up, keep pushing. Don't let daily little trials and tribulations, they, they are very minuscule compared to the strength that you have and just dig deep and find that strength because you can do it. You can, if like I said before, if I can do it, anybody can do it because I've failed so many times and I haven't failed. I'm just not done yet. Well, thank you, Georgia. A word of truth from one of the community's biggest butt kickers. <laughs> so, <laughs> Kicking butt and taking names. Yeah, be ready for Georgia Baker to take your name. You <laughs> and go. you could end up here telling your story too. So awesome. Thank you so much, Georgia. Farewell, everyone. Until next time, you guys go kick butt, take names. <laughs> <laughs>